broad spectrum of research lectures on such topics ranging from nanotechnology to medical physics was also presented at this year's conference. And both undergraduate and graduate students engage in workshops. And many also had the opportunity to present their own research work during the conference poster sessions. In recognition of outstanding scientific achievement, NSBP also handed out a number of awards. Among the recipients was Dr. Joseph Johnson, who NSBP surprised with a new award named after legendary physicist Dr. Warren Henry. Professor Johnson was recognized for his research contributions to plasma and fluid physics, his mentorship of students, for helping to build the physics PhD program at FAMU, and for his service to NSBP and the nation. About an hour ago, I was on the way to the restroom. <laughs> And these guys told me I had to stay. Uh, and I don't know why. I, I really appreciate this. I look out on this group and I remember how it started. And if I could have dreamed that we would come to a day like this, and I'd get to stand up here as a first Warren Henry Medalist, whom I knew, know so well, and in whom I stood in the trenches so often, on behalf, of, on behalf of the uh, integrity and survival of physics in the black community. I'm very, very deeply appreciative. <laughs> Thank you. Also honored this year was the late Dr. Walter McAfee, a pioneering researcher in electronic communications with the U.S. Army. NSBP also gave out a number of scholarships to deserving up-and-coming physicists like Peter Blair, an undergraduate physics student at Duke University. I'm really honored to have been chosen from a group of very competitive applicants. Like, I mean, just looking at the people who, are, who I'm surrounded by, like, there are definitely a lot of outstanding people who are pro perhaps equally deserving of this award. I just like to dedicate it, you know, to my parents, to my mentor, my faculty mentor, Dr. Pettis. Like, he was really inspirational in this because I went into him just for a faculty recommendation. He sat down with me and he talked about my career goals, my personal statement, and he kind of walked me through the process. And I really thank God for people like him, you know, it, it really means a lot to me. It says that all the hard work and the dedication that I've put into physics is paying off and that people see the potential that is in me and they want to draw that out, they want to invest in me. And, I'm, and I take that as, as a positive, you know, that's really inspirational to me. It's like, hey, there are some people out there who believe in you and not only believe in you, but they, they're willing to put their money where their mouth is. They're saying, hey, you have potential and I want to invest in you. Like, I really appreciate that. For many of these physicists, this year's conference reconfirmed their passion and commitment to making an impact in physics. When I started science, I always had this idea in my mind that I wanted to, to make some positive, significant contribution to society. And in all I've done in science, that's always driven me. Um, whether I've done that yet or not, I don't think so. I think I have a long way to go. But ultimately, I think that's my goal. And whatever I do, be it teaching, be it mentoring, or just the research I do is making some positive impact on society. I plan on definitely becoming a professor at the university. Uh, I have this sort of personal dream of designing a new type of university uh, in Africa, and it's been a goal for my, of mine for the last 10 years. After graduation, I plan to go to medical school, um, and later on, uh, once I establish my career, I was thinking of uh, working in research, um, possibly with a medical uh, physicist. 10 years from now, I hope to be on the ISS, testing spacecraft propulsion systems with as a lieutenant commander in the Coast Guard. My first and foremost goal is to be able to just be involved in research that's cutting edge and that keeps me excited. I think one thing that NPPS does better than anybody else is support the students and they recognize the necessity of the support for students and I think that gets lost in a lot of the other conferences because maybe the emphasis isn't so much support because it's not so necessary on the, as a whole. But being black and being in physics, you need support no matter where you are. I hope this conference, you know, blows up and it extends to a, um, a level that's larger than what's, what's going on right now to a global level. And you know, I really hope that it, um, it has a positive impact on not only this country, but the whole world. Because I think we're doing a great thing here. I think the National Society of Black Physicists is a tremendous organization. I think the society is now on the path of doing great things in terms of increasing its members, in terms of having a significant impact on the very serious underrepresentation of African Americans in the physics community. To 
uh, have more members in leadership uh, positions within the Science and Technology Directorate of the United States of America, uh, to have more members who are faculty at uh, majority institutions and uh, historically black colleges and universities and in general to ensure that the membership is healthy and gainfully employed. We're 12 to 13 percent of the population, yet we represent only 1 percent of the PhD physicists and astronomers. That's appallingly low. That needs to be rectified and it's a society, the National Society of Black Physicists, in my view, that needs to take the lead in rectifying the situation. I feel very good about the path that society is on and I am confident that it will have a major impact on some of the fundamental problems of Afro-Americans in science and also um, associated with it the problem of lack of scientists in the motherland, Africa. And I often try to tell students, you know, you, you, you start off on a path and that path may change many times, but the important thing is to do things that you're happy with and who can make you feel content. It's a matter of exposing yourself to opportunities, to people, to venues that will allow you to see what it is that you may be interested in and ultimately maybe will be interested in. Try to determine early on in say your undergraduate career whether you really like this or not. And what I usually tell students is, you know, it's nothing worse than having a job that you have to get up every morning and you hate that job. That's a miserable existence. They probably can write their own ticket if they excel in math and science. So I would encourage them to study and study hard, um, to look uh, at science as an avenue for them to make a greater contribution uh, to society later in life. I think that has been my greatest contribution, uh, putting more students into the, uh, minority students into the pipeline. I've been very successful at Virginia State in doing that. Well, the main thing I would say is it's never too late because if one, for example, grew up in a situation where there really was no encouragement, let's say specifically, towards science, and there was not an opportunity, but at some point later in one's life, one decides that this is, you know, something I want to do, it's never too late. For more information about the National Society of Black Physicists, visit www.nsbp.org or call 703-536 4207.